All right, Oren, thank you so much. Uh, joining us now, Adam Bowler. He's the former CEO of the International Development Finance Corporation under President Trump, working with U.S. negotiator Zalmay Khalilzad. Uh, he has negotiated twice with the Taliban senior leadership during the Trump administration. Adam, thanks so much for joining us. Um, first of all, let me just ask, uh, because you've had this very rare, what it must have been odd experience, um, <laughs> most Americans will never set foot in a room with the Taliban. Um, what is negotiating with them like? Uh, can you take them at their word? What tactics seem to work with them? So I think the key thing to remember about the Taliban is they are a militia. They're a regional militia. Uh, they're fairly well organized. And so I think on the upside, they can keep their word. On the downside, if we don't have pressure, and I mean that from a military perspective, to hold them accountable, they won't keep their word. Uh, and so I think you know a good example of them keeping wor their word is a number of years ago, a year ago, they said they wouldn't attack U.S. forces. The day after they said that, and we made the agreement, they kept their word and they didn't. My concern going forward is what is the accountability to hold them to their word? So let me ask you, when they say, for example, I mean, they have a very, I, I would say much more sophisticated than it used to be at least, propaganda arm, and they'll say, the Taliban will say, you know, all is forgiven. If you work with the Americans, we're not going to hold you account. Uh, you're, you'll be fine. You won't be punished. But that's obviously not true. Um, Brianna Keeler earlier today obtained a document uh, that Oren just included in his report, a, a death sentence to somebody who hadn't even worked with the Americans, but his brother had, and he'd helped that person uh, get out. So is this a matter of the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing, or is this a matter of they're just lying? Uh, it's a matter of there's no accountability and they think they're, that we're leaving. Uh, and so what, I, what I'm concerned about, what I think you'll see, is if we do fully depart, uh, that will increase quite a bit. So they're going to say what we want to hear. Their view is they're taking over the country now. We're going to be gone completely August 31st. Uh, and so they're going to do what they want. Um, their goal ultimately has been how do we get the United States out of the country and how do we take it over? Uh, so they will do anything to that effect. And so again, if we're not there and we're not a military presence to hold them accountable, I think you expect that they'll do what, what they want to do once we're out. Once we're out. The White House says it's in daily talks with the Taliban. Uh, they're, they're not planning to have President Biden negotiate with them uh, directly. Uh, do you agree with that decision? Yeah, I don't think the president of the United States needs to negotiate directly with a militant group. So people involved with evacuation efforts tell me that the Taliban are refusing to let people through uh, to get to the airport uh, unless they're American citizens or green card holders. So, so that, that means that the special immigrant visas, the SIVs, the Af Afghan allies can't get through. Um, d does that surprise you? It doesn't surprise me based on this date. I mean, here's my suggestion. I think there's a couple things to remember. Number one, I don't care what political administration we're in. The United States military is the strongest and most trained in the world. Our troops know what to do. Uh, and at the end of the day, we can negotiate, but we should do it on our terms. And so I would view that as unacceptable. Uh, you know, an American ideal is taking care of our citizens. It's taking care of our green card holders, but it's also taking care of our allies and those people that supported us. We have a view of no person left behind. Let's hold that ideal. And the best way to do that is what the Biden administration has started to do, which is open up a broader corridor. Don't just locate around the airport in Kabul. It's time for us to be more aggressive and take the advantage. Uh, and let's do what we need to do in order to ensure that both United States citizens, but also our allies are taken care of under any cost. And we have the force and strength to do that. Our troops can do that. We're the best military in the world. Adam Bowler, thank you so much. Appreciate your time today, sir.